eastern Himalayas, nurturing an ancient region, an intermingling of traditions and faiths. It's one of India's lesser known regions, unexplored, remote and exotic for most. But times are changing. As a filmmaker, I have always wanted to explore the northeast of India. I'm here on a journey of discovery and exploration through India's misty mountains. Manipur. Vibrant, culturally rich, and mostly unknown to the rest of India. Touching borders with Myanmar, it connects the Indian subcontinent to Southeast Asia, enabling migration of people and culture for thousands of years. With its capital at Imphal, Manipur has a lot to offer. Nature, culture, and a delicate cuisine. A two-hour easy and comfortable drive from Imphal, and I'm transported into another world. Loktak Lake, the largest freshwater lake in Northeast India. But not many people know that tucked away next to this lake is the famous Kebul Lamjao National Park, home of the mythical Sangai. Sana, a dynamic forest officer, is taking me into Kebul Lamjao today to show me what this forest means for the people of Manipur and the Sangai. So wonderful to see you and ah, yes, mine, wonderful sir. to be here. Ah. And which way are we going? We are going, going straight, sir. Straight, We're going on. straight, sir. So wherever you take us, ah, yes, you sir. know this place better. Uh, Kaibul is two words uh, in our local language. Kai is a tiger, bull is a gather. Lamjao, if you say, it is a vast tract of land. So Kebul Lamjao, it means a vast tract of land where the tigers gathers. And the uniqueness of this is that it is the only floating national park in the world. So it's a uh, floating national park? It's a floating national park in the world. And it is the sole habitat of the endangered and endemic deer species uh, called Sangai. Sangai or the brow antler deer? Uh, brow antler deer. Culturally, Sangai holds a centered place in our state, Manipur. So many epics, folklores, and legends are associated with Sangai. It is believed that the Sangai is the binding soul between the human and nature. Uh, so if we show love, care and respect to Sangai, that means we are showing respect to the nature. So where are we going today? We'll take you to the Pumdi, uh, which is a floating vegetation. Just 40 square kilometers in area, this swamp forest ecosystem is unique and the only one of its type in the world. Too deep to be a marsh and too shallow to be a lake, it is a rich habitat and the only home to the Sangai on the planet. The Sangai was a protected animal by the order of the royal family. Hunting for the Sangai could get your hands chopped off as a punishment. During the colonial rule, excessive and rampant hunting and poaching drastically reduced the Sangai populations. 
In fact, it was officially declared extinct in 1951. In 1953, the Sangai was rediscovered, a major turn of events, making the Kebul Lamjao a protected sanctuary. Fourteen individuals were documented in Kebul Lamjao by Dr. Ranjit Singh in the 70s. A major breakthrough and Kebul Lamjao was finally declared a national park in 1977. You know, the success of the Shanghai here has been tremendous. Right from the edge of extinction, it has been brought back. The return of the Shanghai is something we all feel very proud about. So, what were the challenges you faced? Because the number was very small. One of the major challenges is that the Shanghai is confined is a single isolated population in Kebulam Jao National Park. Mm -hmm. So they are more vulnerable or susceptible to the genetic drift. Mm -hmm. So for to sustain or to ensure that the Sangai survive for the future, a viable population of 500 individuals is required as per the studies. That's your target. Yeah, that's, that's the target. And besides, we need to, to locate for an alternate home. Yeah, of that is very important. Sangai. So. Yeah. But this is such a unique ecosystem. Here is landmass, which I think is landmass, but it is floating on water. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's and the unique. Sangai lives on that. Mm, yeah. Actually, we call this vegetation conglomeration of is Fumdi, which is, of Fumdi. course, uh, conglomerations of uh, soil, vegetation, and organic matter at different decomposition stages. And it's floating. Uh, it's floating. Uh, it's floating because it has a higher composition of vegetation. So it keeps from the higher buoyancy. So it remains afloat. Suddenly, it nourishment takes place in two cycles. It's basically two cycles. During the rainy season, the fumdi rises up with a rise in the water. However, during the lean season, the fumdi falls down or settles down where they reach the bottom of the leg and they extract the nutrients from the soil. So they, basically when they extract the nutrients from the soil, after that they nourish the plant which grow above the water. So it, say, uh, it, is, it says that about one fifth of the thickness of the fumdi lies above the water and four fifth lies below the water. What an amazing design of nature. Without fumdi there will be no sangai and Without Sangai, there will be no Kebulam Jao National Park. Let's have a first-hand experience of it, sir. Please, sir. See, sir. It's a spongy. So, oh, my goodness. Yeah. So when the Sangai starts movement, so it synchronizes with this motion of the Fumdi. Oh. So Sangai being gentle and also shy. So when we see from a distance, it looks as if the deer is dancing. Oh! <laughs> so EPG coin Sangai is the dancing deer of Manipur. So it becomes All right. well it's, known and, to and the world. Just, just because what's happening, look yeah. at this, 100 kilos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. What an experience. So yeah. tell me, what is the best time for anyone to come here? Because I think people should come here with their families yeah. and experience the wonders of nature. The best seasons will be in the month of February and March because this is the seasons where the migratory birds like uh, bar-headed goose, uh, the mandarin duck, and the rudy cell ducks. Sangai? Sangai, that's also the best season because this is the seasons where the rooting season starts. Oh so if goodness. you are being a wildlife lover, you will have, may have the opportunities of the steak fighting a locking antlers. From being declared extinct to growing to a small herd of 14 deers, today Kebul Lamjao is home to over 260 Sangai, proving that the habitat is bouncing back. The conservation and protection work of the forest officers is paying off. There is of course still a lot to be done, but protecting the Sangai ensure this unique ecosystem survives for the sake of the Sangai and more for the people of Manipur.
Loktak, a group of 20 wetlands spread over 300 square kilometers. Five rivers flow into the lake, making it a crucial catchment area, a lifeline for Manipur and its people. For the Meithi fishermen, Loktak is their mother goddess, a source of water and livelihood for centuries. Over 300 floating villages exist on this lake, home to the fishermen of Loktak. But the future of this lake is uncertain. Habitat loss and an increasing population have put immense pressure on the resources. More than 100,000 people depend directly on the lake today for their livelihood. Mai Pak Chao grew up in a fishing village near the lake, deeply connected to Lok Tak. He is dedicated to conserve the lake's ancient culture and environment. So the largest freshwater lake mm -hmm. in northeast India, yeah. with six districts and sustaining mm -hmm. over two lakh people. Yeah. But population is increasing. Yeah, definitely increasing by, by, Pre by. Pressure on the lake is going to increase. Yes. So how will the lake sustain so many so many people? That's that's what my concern. Manipur have a twenty eight lakhs populations here, but a lot of uh, more than ten lakhs of the youth are unemployment. So all the unemployed youth are trying to get employment. They are depending and coming to the lake side and try to get employment. What to do? do? It is only we have to think about the alternative occupation, not depending the whole to the lake side, to the peripheral area, to the village, and we have to be worked out and what activities we have to do. So this is the only means. Otherwise, the people are only depending to the lake side, the longevity of the lake you know, will be shorter and shorter. The lake actually cannot sustain for too long. Yeah, tourism is very young to Manipur, and we have a lot of potential regarding the homestay and rural tourism in Manipur and regarding the peripheral area of the Loktak site. So we have to be developed to the uh, best means by ecotourism and not hampering to uh, the nature. Uh, after that, we now started uh, three, four homestays near around the Loktak Lake, and we are targeting to have more homestays. Yeah, having one homestay in my area, in my house, I am giving employment more than 50, 60 people, and only the one homestay. Water hygiene this is a very dangerous, I mean, the waste products to the Loktak Lake. So we plug it, dry it, and we make it in different, different forms and we sell it to the person who are coming here and uh, everybody and the guests, they also very like it. And after selling these finished products, we converted the waste into well. I'm very happy to see that suddenly a parasite plant like water hyacinth okay. is suddenly becoming useful and generating revenue for the people. We have uh, initiated the weaving sectors, women's weaving sectors, we are trying to promote and to get the alternative occupation, not depending to the lag side. Yeah. Yeah, what is the the fishing techniques, I saw some of them, I've never seen them before. We are popularizing the traditional way of method of fishing. Yeah, there seems to be a Chinese type of uh, fishing, but it is not a similar. Technique is quite different. The method may be the same, but the technique, the people... Yeah, it was unique. Yeah, it's it is very, very unique. The fishermen of Loktak practice many kinds of traditional fishing techniques. 
that have evolved over the centuries. The lift net method, locally known as Nupi, is unique. Mostly practiced by women, a net supported by a bamboo frame is used to lift out catch from the water. This small scale fishing, like the other traditional methods, helps to regulate fish populations in the lake. Indigenous techniques and knowledge of fishing like these needs to be preserved. To help in sustainable management of Loktak's natural resources. Managed tourism can play a critical role in preserving biodiversity at Loktak and conservation of this unique ecosystem. The traditional way of life is a cultural heritage of this region. For me, spending time here on this lake has been memorable. To experience firsthand the lives of the fishermen, to try and understand the true meaning of living on water instead of land, at the edge of what seems to be the water world of India. Punshi Lok, live stream in Manipuri, is a place of magical transformation. Six kilometers from Imphal, Punshi Lok is the site of forest restoration with over 200 species of indigenous plants. A security blanket for plants and animals that have found a refuge here against Imphal's fast developing pace. What began as one man's madness to regrow a forest he had experienced as a child is today a community of young people committed to resurrecting an ecosystem for the future. We have been conserving this uh, place for the past uh, 17 years. This is for, for the future generation, for the many, many uh, years to come. I used to be very fascinated with the forest in the Manipur. It used to be really uh, pristine and uh, virgin when I was growing up. So it was like that. It was so amazing. And after I finished my college, I went back again to the forest. Then there was no forest. The forest has all been cut down. At that moment, uh, uh, there was a trigger for me. Uh, I felt really hurt and I wanted to do something, uh, you know, because I I, something which I love so much, it's just not there anymore. It was really uh, bushy, I should say. I mean, all the bush everywhere, lantana, lant lantana bush, thorny bush. And everywhere, it took around uh, five, six years at least to cut them all. There was no big tree around, so when, when we were clear, clearing up for the first, uh, you know, for initially, we didn't have any shed to, uh, you know, go underneath to race. The small tree was there, so we had to sit the, below the tree just to get some sunset. It was like that. Uh, now you look at it. This is what uh, nature does, you know. It's, it does best healing. Let's go for terawak. The walk is designed for a small toddler. It's called terawak because uh, tera is a tree. Uh, it's, in, it's, it's, it's a botanical name, it's silk cotton tree. And uh, it's the biggest flowering uh, tree in this Punsilok. And uh, there is a, a bamboo, giant bamboo. There's one species. Uh, it's a, one of the, it's a beautiful uh, group out there. 
Uh, we planted this uh, around 15 years back, uh, and the, we think it's uh, it's our masterpiece, <laughs> and it's very uh, huge and uh, beautiful also. And you see all this hole; it's made by woodpeckers. There are uh, 25 species of bamboo we have uh, here in a little punsilo, and uh, around 70 species of orchids also is there and uh, 200, more than 200 species of uh, trees. It's called uh, Nau, and uh, it's, 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 uh, our ancestor had used it for, you know, for the rowing. No? Uh, it's light and uh, water resistance, this tree. And it's getting extinct now. It's very rare. You don't see it in the forest anymore. And this is black bamboo. This is another black bamboo. There's, this year, this one new suit has come out. Uh, we thought like it should be our duty collect some of that uh, which is still exists, nurture it here in this place, Punsilo, and making them mature and uh, become a, make a like mother, mother, mother tree or something like that. When uh, one day we have uh, better economy, uh, then people can come and collect uh, seeds from here. Then. Again, uh, we can uh, nurture them everywhere. So this is like a seed bank, a uh, gene bank, uh, we are uh, trying to create here. India is home to more than a thousand species of orchids, and the Eastern Himalayas hold over 70% of these species. Actually, I'll be very honest with you. I was surprised to hear that Manipur is the home of the rarest orchid in the world. Is it true? Yes, yes. we also feel very proud of this. Uh, not only me, uh, but my team who had explored this. And later on, we come to know this is one of the world's rarest orchid in the world. I have so many stories that I want to tell to the people. And it's not only just story, because I want to be an entertainer. मार्शल आर्ट क्या है पहले तो नहीं मालूम है उसका डिसिप्लिन है ना बहुत ऐसा होता है और हमने वो नहीं प्रोटेक्ट नहीं किया कि तो कौन प्रोटेक्ट करेगा